Hey everybody, Dr. Brett Schur, low carb cardiologist and medical director at dietdoctor.com. You know, I haven't done many videos lately, but I just went to the mailbox and got the latest uh, New England Journal of Medicine. And boy, looking at these articles just made me have to say something. It really says a lot about the state of medicine and medical research um, in two of these articles. So let me tell you about the first one. Poly pill for cardiovascular disease prevention in an underserved population. So what this one did, they went into a, um, a town in Alabama and, you know, definitely, definitely an underserved population. They're making less than $15,000 per year for their, their annual household income. They don't have great access to health care. And you can imagine in that type of society, in that type of situation, sort of like survival is their goal, not promoting health, right? They just need to get through day to day and make sure they have enough food to eat um, and make sure they're probably working two or three jobs or whatever the case is just to try to make ends meet. I mean, so you can get the idea, it, 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 it's tough to really promote health. So what do the researchers do? They say, let's design a pill that has atorvastatin, 20 milligrams, so that's Lipitor, and Lodipine, 2.5 milligrams, a blood pressure pill, Losartan, 25 milligrams, another blood pressure pill, and hydrochlorothiazide, 12.5 milligrams, another blood pressure pill. So one poly pill with a lipid lowering agent and three blood pressure pills, so a total of four pills, all rolled up into one. Let's give it to these people for, um, how long do they give it to you? A year and see what happens and compare it to usual care. And, you know, the big results that they found were that, uh, you know, the blood pressure reduced a little, nine millimeters of mercury. Um, the cholesterol, the LDL lowered a little by 15 milligrams per deciliter. So there were these small changes. Um, there was like 86% compliance. So they're talking about all these details and about how this is a beneficial intervention and how maybe we should do this for more people, just give them this poly pill. Gosh, that just doesn't sit with me though. What that tells me is we're giving up on these people. We're giving up on having any hope that they're gonna change their lifestyle. We're giving up because of their social situation that they can make better choices about how they eat, about how they sleep, about how they have physical fitness, about how they manage their stress. We're giving up on all that because we're just gonna give them this pill. And this pill with four different drugs, all with potential side effects to lower some of their risk markers a little bit, right? Didn't say did they have less heart attacks or less strokes or did they die, live or die more. They just said we lowered some of their markers. So to me, this is all that's wrong with medicine and medical research. And instead, I'd rather see this as opposed to the quote unquote usual care, compare this to people you know, having um, a detailed course on how to use the Diet Doctor website, how to learn about nutrition, how to learn about uh, lifestyle factors. Give them a health coach, an online health coach, an online program, something that they can check in with once a week, once a month, something to help them to do more than just give up on the fact that they are not gonna improve their lifestyle. So that one got me going. That's what's wrong with uh, medical practice and medical research. The other one, which was interesting, anti-thrombin, Antithrombotic therapy for atrial fibrillation with stable coronary disease. This one's a little more specific. It took people with coronary artery disease having had a stent or bypass surgery one year prior, and they were now stable, um, and who also had atrial fibrillation and compared um, an antithrombotic agent, rivaroxaban, versus that same agent plus an antiplatelet like aspirin or Plavix or something like that. So this is a good intervention, randomized trial, although it was open label, but what did they find? They found a reduction in mortality, right? So you don't get a better outcome marker than that. Overall mortality was decreased by over one and a half percent in just two years. Um, so even though this is more specific and isn't going to apply to everybody, what I see is this is what's right with medical research. We found that giving one drug is better than two drugs because mortality is decreased with just the one drug rather than the two drugs. Um, and we're, re we're, we're measuring real endpoints here. So that was an interesting study that's going to change practice. That is gonna be far reaching and dramatic. Cause when I think of all the people I've taken care of with AFib and heart disease on uh, Xarelto and aspirin, now everybody's gotta come off the aspirin based on, not everybody, sorry. Talk to your doctor before you make any changes, obviously. But this study would suggest that you should talk to your doctor about whether or not you need that aspirin. So very interesting, a big juxtaposition of those two studies. But 
gosh, getting back to that first study, let's not give up on people. Let's realize the message we've been telling them is maybe the wrong message. And we need to give them a different message about how to improve their lifestyle and show them ways to do that. Dietdoctor.com obviously is my favorite way to do it. There are other resources available, but let's not give up on people. All right. Thanks a lot. Um, hopefully I'll be doing more videos soon, but you can definitely check out more of what I've been doing on dietdoctor.com and I wish you all a happy and healthy day.